give over to the, the, the worship team. I must comment on the many shades of pink that we're seeing across the membership this morning. The worshipers here, we know what this means, and I'm glad that we have responded to the call to show support for uh, an illness that we are trying to battle at the national and community and even international levels. So all of us this morning in our various shades of pink, thank you for showing support for the fight against breast cancer. As the pastor said, the devil is a liar. It gives me great pleasure to put you in the capable hands to lead our worship this morning of Mr. Mardal and his team. Morning family. Stand, let's worship God this morning.
Lord, be magnified. Let's say hallelujah this morning to the Lord. Be magnified, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you the highest praise this morning. Blessing and honor and glory and majesty and power and might, Lord, be unto your holy and your matchless name. At this time, we are going to invite Brother Kenneth Raffitt to come and to lead us to the throne of grace in prayer. As usual, the pastor has uh, the indicated that the altar is open for anyone at any time who may choose to do so. Brother Raffitt. Made you too small in my eyes, oh Lord, forgive me, and I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me, but now. as a body we want to say thank you thank you oh God for the blood that give us the right to come before your throne we thank you Lord hallelujah Jesus that we are being reconciled unto you we ask that you will take the preeminence Lord and have your way here this morning hallelujah Jesus there will not be one stone that will not be on cover this morning. Because God is a good God. He said a thousand shall fall at your left. But ten thousand at your right. That's the power. That's what we have, church. We have given it. We have gotten it from the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you that we can come and bring all our petitions before you. Every one of us in here has something to say to you. And you hear each and every one of us at the same time. Because while we are here, there's others 
miles away that praying to the same God. And you hear every word, Father God. You see every one of us. I pray that you would touch us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. I pray, God, that you, God, will stir with a desire that we would want more of you and more of you. I pray, God, that we may decrease and you may increase. That your Holy Spirit that within us, Lord, will belittle our flesh. That you, O oh God, will take ultimate control of our whole entire bodies. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body? But I thank God. Hallelujah, church. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the first. He's the last. I thank you, Father God, that we can come and we can, oh God, we can tell you how we feel. We may be burdened this morning, but you see that burdens are lifted at Calvary. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, this morning. I bring this worship thing before you. I bring the song leaders before you in this church. I bring the backups before you in this church. I bring the musicians before you in this church. I bring the, 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 the head of, of, of the multimedia of this church, the technology area. I bring the ushers from at the door to you. I bring, oh God, the board, and most of all, the pastor, the head of this church before you this morning, Father God. I ask that you will cover each and every one of them, Father God. Hallelujah. I ask, like, give them a double portion of your spirit, Lord, that we can recognize the enemy from dust so far. I said, no more. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, I give you thanks and praise, Lord. That whenever persons pass, this church will be a beacon, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. And they will want to come in. And they will want what we have. A joy that is unspeakable. And that it is full of glory. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, for that joy. I thank you for that, that love that you have birthed within us, Lord. I thank you, O oh God. That we can come any time before you. Whether it's morning, noon, or day. And you hear us, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, church. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When someone say hallelujah. Give highest glory to, to God. The angels say holy. 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 Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. For the ministers of this church, the ones that will minister to your, your word from this pulpit, the ones that will sit and Bible study, Lord, I teach your people. Lord, I thank you, O oh God, for those that are in the Sunday school classes. Lord, that has a big role to play. When the missionaries and evangelists go out to bring them in, we have the role to play. We have the role to teach your people your word, Father God. Hallelujah. Study to, prove, to show yourself a proof. Not unto man, but unto God. Hallelujah. I pray that we will get to this change that when we get sick and we come with problems, that we look to God. Because at that time, he is glorifying himself and say consider my servant Deborah consider my servant Paul consider my servant Adrian consider my servant Pauline God is God is saying to the enemy that he loves you and I so much that he's saying you really think you could harm my servant, to the stage where he denies me? You consider Job? Church, identify yourself with the word. And help yourself to live above the world. That you may be in the world, but not of the world. Hallelujah. I thank God for the power of the anointing. Oh, hallelujah. That he breaks every yoke. That he is able Oh, glory to 
Mr. God, he's able. He's more than able. Oh, Jesus. That means you see that we can walk upon the serpents. Hallelujah. Why are we so living defeated? No, that we serve an awesome God. He's an awesome God, church. When the heart is open, there should not be even room. Because we want to touch the hem of his garments. Hallelujah. Only if I can touch the hem of his garments, Lord, have his mercy. I thank you, Father God, that each and every one of us can touch your hem. And he knows it personally because he feels virtue leaves his body. So there's no excuse. There's no excuse. I thank you for the young ones that will stand in the gap after we're gone. Providing that we have that time now because the time draweth near. And he said that we need to look up. Look up, church. Redemption drive. I thank you, Father God, for the opportunity and the privilege of the blood. The blood is what gives us the rights to come before the throne of grace. Not by words any man shall boast. I thank you, Father God. I pray that you will touch even the chairperson. I thank that you would even touch the welcomer. I thank you, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. For every member that may be watching, those that who can't even make it here this morning, but watching, I thank God for you. I love you. And I pray your Holy Spirit, Father God, will touch them right now. And that they will feel, oh God, the anointing running through their veins, Lord. And that they will know that they are in the presence of Almighty God. And like Moses came down when the glory was upon him, I pray that we will have the glory. That when we leave here, Someone will say, surely there goes a, a child of God. Because they recognize the anointing. Something is different about that person. And I thank you, Father God, for the anointing. That it will touch us this morning. And that we will feel afresh. That when we leave, we'll be more than ministers. We'll be more than witnesses. But we will be like the Shadrach. Misha, because we will know that we went through the fire. Father, I thank you, O oh God, this morning. And I pray that the anointing and the desire that we have for you will increase this morning in our voices. As the worship team lead us before you, Lord, that we will give you our all in all. We thank you this morning, Father God, that we can come and we can sit and we can listen and we can enjoy you. And most of all, we know that we have a God that's watching over us. Hallelujah. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are And in my nothing you can. Magnify, oh Lord, be magnified, be magnified, be magnified, oh Lord, you are highly exalted, and there is nothing. Oh, Lord. 
thank you, Father, O Lord, thou art highly exalted. At this time, we're going to have a testimony from Sister Pauline Curtin. Sister Curtin? Yes? And you may take your seats, please. A pleasant good morning to the church. God is an awesome God. A year ago, I stood on this platform and gave what I called a pre-testimony about what was happening with me. And I thought it fitting that I should return today because this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and today is the last Sunday of the month. So today I am here to give God the glory you wouldn't understand. I need to thank the pastor first though because a year ago he informed and asked the church to pray for me as I was going to get my surgery done. And it has been a journey, but it did not seem like my journey only. It seemed like the journey of the church because the amount of love that was poured out to me. People would cook food and send home to me. People called and said, let me take his eye so you can get some rest. Persons gave my husband's numbers and said, tell your wife to call me if she needs anything. I thank you, church. I thought it fit to share what I was going through because sometimes you do need to have a network. And I need to thank Sister Deborah and Sister Lana. And yes, they gave me the right to call their names. We are under the same umbrella. We have the same characteristics, but not the same commodities. And I can share with them what I'm going through, and they can in turn share with me, and we get information from each other. But you know what, church? God is so good. Amen. I had to go through chemotherapy and radiation. Now, as many of you may know by someone else telling you, chemo makes you vomit, it makes you nauseous, you lose your appetite. It, it's just the worst thing. But my God, I was never sick. I never vomited. I never had nauseous. I never lost my appetite. Actually, I think I was eating more. To God be the glory. I want to also thank my parents and my sisters who were my rock my husband and my daughter. Without them, I would not be here as I am today. But church, I want to basically thank you guys for all that you have done. And let me, let me end by saying, yes, my reports have been very good. As I tell people, it has been Going through what I went through, it is life changing. That's all it is for me. It's nothing else. It is a change of life. And I have adapted to that change of life. To God be the glory. Thank you. God bless you. I thought it necessary to break away from what would be planned. Um, sometimes we take the goodness of God for granted. And there's so many of our, particularly females, who have gone through some very difficult challenges. And we thank God that their testimony has substantiated the fact that God is a healer. Amen. I wish that the church would stand at this time. Let's give God some praise. Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks. This is not on the schedule, but I just feel led to start on the bottom side. And let me say this to you. The order is open. I find that when somebody comes to pray, you don't come. If you have a person this morning, don't wait for the end of the service. You want to come again and say, Lord, I thank you. Do it now. Let's give God some thanks. Honor and glory and praise. Thanks. I give you thanks. 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 I give you thanks. Let's worship God and give you thanks. For all you Yeah. 
wonderful God. There is none like you in heaven or on earth. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that family members can come and testify that you are a wonderful God. When the enemy said yes, thank God you said no. We praise you from the depths of our hearts because there is none like you. We thank you because you are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are a friend. And I bless you this morning for those persons who were able to come and testify that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. Father, bless this family and rule me this morning. Satan, we say to you, you cannot prevail. We say to you that you are a liar. For greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. We thank you for the wonderful testimonies that were shared. And God, we believe that if you have done it in the past, you can do it again. I commit every body, male and female, before you, God, touch it from the top of our heads to the fall of the feet. Because no weapon that is formed against us shall ever prosper. And God, we say thank you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Because you are wonderful, God. The devil is a liar. And when he says to us that it cannot happen, God says it will happen. And that's why we can magnify your name. Because you are a good God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me, my soul cry out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. We are going to sing that for us once. I know we have, we have, we have broken away for what these guys spend hours planning. But it's about God. It's not about me at all. So I rejoice and thank God. We, we rejoice with those persons who are alive this morning. They could have been in the grave. But thank God we are alive. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what He's done for me, my soul, let's say, When I think of the goodness of Jesus, let's say,
say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Shit, you 
Lord, Baba, it's all to the Father Church. It's all to the Father Jesus. We're gonna go one more time. Baba, oh. Baba means Father Church. We're gonna sing to the Lord for giving us all the blessings this Lord. Hallelujah, church. Come on. Baba, oh. oh. this morning. Special greetings and welcome to everyone joining us online. We wish you God's blessings. It's an amazing day, a fantastic opportunity for the worship we had. We all came together today to share in fellowship and praise. May we look on today as another wonderful opportunity to draw ever closer to our Lord, ever closer to his grace and his light, and to let his word be a light onto our path each and every day. Now, if you're visiting with us, that you're not a member of this church, but you visit with us regularly, I want to take this opportunity this morning to tell you thank you. We are grateful that you drop in, we are grateful that you come, and we are grateful that you're here this morning and we thank you for coming. And we look forward to seeing you again and again. Um, if you've not been here for a long time and you have joined us this morning, church, family, I want you to acknowledge the presence of our sister, Sister Grace. She's with us this morning. Welcome, thank you for coming. It's a long time that we've not been seeing her. We know she goes and she comes, but we thank God that she's here with us this morning. Thank you to all the visitors who came. I have cards for two visitors. One is Kathy Ann Proverbs, and she is Kathy Ann Proverbs. She's from Pete Bay Road in Merrick, St. St. Philip. I say it no more. She has no church affiliation, and she 
she is not the guest of anyone. How did you, you just decide to come in this morning? Please remain standing because we have to give you a special welcome. Another person is Angela Proverbs, and she's from Cole Crescent in St. Philip. Angela? I guess y'all are related. Oh, oh, Angela. And she's affiliated with the Wesleyan Holiness. Welcome to you both. Do we have any other visitors in the congregation this morning? Oh, we have one, two, three, four. Are you a family or are you individuals? Family, well, could you tell us? Your You're from London, you're visiting from London. We thank you for dropping in this morning. We welcome you and we thank you so much for coming. Now family, we have six wonderful visitors. You have somebody else? Oh, oh, you are not with that family. Oh, okay, sorry, tell, tell us your name. I'm John. You're John? Yes. We have some Johns here, so you're, you're, you will mix with them. Yeah. <laughs> we, we thank you for coming. So family, let us welcome our visitors. Let's give them a Over 100 years ago, a small group of leaders with a vision were moved to action. Their goal? To fulfill Jesus' commandment to go and tell the whole world about His love. What is NMI? We pray for missions. We give to missions. We sacrifice for missions. We care that the world knows of God's love. We invest in people's lives. For over 100 years, NMI has been a vital part of the Church of the Nazarene a volunteer movement to mobilize the church in missions around the world. What might be accomplished in the next 100 years if we remain united? Envision. All ages involved in action. Imagine the impact. Join us as we follow the Holy Spirit's guidance and lead NMI into the future.
I want to invite you to remain standing as we have our Bible reading at this time. It is going to be done for us this morning by our dear young brother, Tyler Howard. And it's taken from Psalm 103, verses 1 to 12. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 12. Brother Tyler Howard will lead us in the reading. Thank you. Hello. Good morning, the church. Uh, this morning's Bible reading will be taken from Psalms 103, verses 1 to 12. Our reading. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For all as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far have he removed our transgressions from us. Here ends the Bible reading. We're going to do our last song before we hear from the word of God. Oh, take my 
that can be derived there from. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the one who I present to you, the one who will give us the word for today. Surprisingly, for some of you, maybe it is not our dear pastor, but a regular and a dear brother. Let's put our hands together and welcome to the pulpit, Brother Sean Griffith. Say good morning to the church. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. He is worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory, honor, and thanks. Before we start, I guess Pastor asked for a little indulgence for a brief testimony. I would have been here quite often speaking of, you may have a seat, of God has kept me in the time, let's say, of famine. I would have spoken of the days of tears after losing my job in 2009. It has been a long journey. It has been a journey of you worship and you shout. They tell you that is what you should do. 
There's been days where you really ain't feel like shouting. So you cry. There have been days where, being honest, you all never went through this. We don't let God even exist at some points. Because you feel that you're praying and you're praying to yourself. And then you will hear a voice speak. And give you assurance that he's still there. Now the beauty, the beauty about the whole episode is, and I was telling Dwayne just on Friday night, that God told me I was going to lose my job. Huh? Even if the very same week that it happened, he told me it was going to happen. And he said, you're going to be home for a while, but don't worry, I got you covered. Just like that, he said it. And during that journey, I found myself saying, but God, I know you said for a while, but I didn't figure it can be so long. You are wild and my, my wild don't seem to be adding up. But then around 2015, I got a temporary position down at Saul. And initially it was rather stressful and I heard the voice said, this period of barrenness is over. But then five months later, I was home. So I was like, hold on. They tell me this is over. Why are you doing home? And the spirit said, I told you it is over. All right. They said, looking like it's over, but you tell me so. And I was home for an additional four months. And then I got a call telling me at another division of Saul that ironically I had applied for, had an interview, and didn't get the job. Huh? Oh, you start temporary again, the 5th of May, 2016. And it kept being. The contract would come for three months, then another three months, and then another three months. And it was very frustrating because then you have, you really can't plan because they don't know what's going to happen. And I say to God, but your tell me is, this is over, what's going on? September this year, got called in the meeting and was told, because this division that I'm in is supposed to be closing down. So we were brought in to close it down more or less. And then they said, okay, they're making you permanent for October the first. Well yeah. don't clap yet because October the first came and no contract. <laughs> so you're like, hold on. And he was like, God, what is this? I said, well like I trust you. Regardless. If you are doing it for me, it got to happen. Because in that time I was applying, and I had gotten to the stage now you are applying, you have all these other things to put on your CV. You're not even getting a call for an interview. So I'm like, God, oh, what is this? And I remember the Spirit said, Well, you ain't leaving, Saul. That's why you ain't getting no reply to nothing. So, okay. I got my contract this week. Amen. So from the 1st of November, I will be permanent, and I owe it all to God. It has been a long road. As I said, it has been times of laughing. It has been times of tears. I wish I could stand up here and say, boy, every day I just trusted God at his word, boy. And my faith was strong and it would not waver. Yeah, right. Yeah, I cry. I doubt. I shout at God. I crawl with God. I think I said one day I got down on my knees and I started to pray how we have been told to pray, dear Heavenly Father, Asking and all, you know. And the spirit says, Stop. Tell me how you feel. The spirit said, You feel that I left you out. You feel that I have forsaken you. Tell me that. I say, You sure? He said, Yeah, tell me how you feel. As we say, Barbie, boy, light in it. I ain't gonna light it. I light in it. I crawl. I tell God everything that I had felt like telling him. And it was as though a whole weight had been lifted off of me. And I felt his peace come over. 
He said, Abba Father. I mean, at times we treat him as though he's a distant slave master that we can't have conversations with. If he's Abba Father, he's Abba Father. He's not Abba Father just to sing two songs and say Abba Father. My children don't have no fear coming to me. They come to me and they tell me stuff. They tell you that sure all say, but did they tell me this? Tell you she hear it, I heard it a long time ago. They have no fear because why? I am Abba Father, I'm Father. And I treat them as father, so they have no reason to be fearful of coming to me and say, I made a mistake, I did this or that. And if God is our father, that is how we have to be with our father. Stop me, man, be praying be prayers and tell God exactly how it is, your struggles or failures or love for him. Sometimes when we frustrated with him. He made us. He knows how we are. He called us as we were. He called us knowing we the miserable. He called us knowing that we cry babies. And yet he did. So we ask God to be honest with your father. That's my little testimony. Amen. Glory be to God. God, I pray that you will bless and touch my lips. I pray that as I speak, I will speak your word and none other. Your word will go forth powerful and touch and change hearts to your glory and honor. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 10. We're reading it from 26 to 39. I won't actually read it, but we will go through it as we go along. There's a passage that quite often we don't really like to read. When we are speaking of Jesus, it is not a passage that we read a lot. For obvious reasons. And it is a little hard to read. Now the pastor has been doing a few sermons, looking at revelations and the kind of things that will happen in the end times. But this passage looks not only at the end times, but opinion, it speaks of your Christian walk in general. And it kind of gives us the idea of what our Christian walk is going to be like. Now, there are some, when I hear them on the radio, I dismiss them at times. Seems to give the impression that the Christian walk is one of ease and comfort and prosperity. And there are some ministers that pretty much tie the level of your Christianity to how much possessions and wealth that you actually have. And we call it the prosperity gospel. I always say, somehow, the only one that seems to be getting rich is the same person that is pushing the gospel. But hey, that's another story. But it's something that is in vogue. And so our wealth, our Christianity is tied to our wealth. So even to say, as I said earlier about struggle, someone would tell you, no, speak that into being. You have to speak against that. But I'm like, oh, it's my toe hurting me, though. So I can't pretend that it's not hurting me. I can't say what it's to say it's not it's hurting me, it's gonna cause it to continue to hurt and it's hurting. So I will say that it is hurting. Yes, I will pray, believe in God that He can stop it from hurting, but it is hurting. If I look at my bank account and I realize they have zero dollars, they have zero dollars. To say that it has zero dollars is no less having less faith than the man that look at his and see a million. But there's some that have tied your Christianity to your wealth. So to say that means that you are not being a good Christian. There's some that put on their bumper stickers, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I would love to scrape it off of every bumper I see. <laughs> Call them like foolishness. Read the Bible. Some of the greatest men and women of the Bible were saying more stressed out people. 
you got men running cave and run a high. And the things that these men do, we can't even begin to think of doing. I never ran even a good rabbit for as a chariot. But the man that ran in the cave ran past chariot. Huh? That same man that ran and hid and see death, he went up in a plane and chariot straight up to the father. Or unless something change, I gotta go and walk the burial grounds. Stressed out. You got John the Baptist that saw Jesus, declared who Jesus was, but in this time of struggle, saying a message and ash, Are you the Christ or shall we look for another? Mm -hmm. You got men talking about being too blessed to be stressed. I think that's the problem. You got not stressed. So you don't worry about nothing and all kinds of things going on in the world. That need to be uplifted to the Father. And the reason is that a lot of times we are not reading passages like Matthew chapter 10. These are passages that we don't generally hear about. And we don't like to read. Because they're truthful. And it hits us where we really don't want to go. Now Matthew 10... Starting from 26, it starts, So I have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Amen. Have no fear. Now where is this coming from? Now Matthew 10 is the commissioning of the 12 apostles by Jesus. He is sending them, sending them out on their assignment to preach the gospel in Israel. Because he told them to go to the Gentiles. He had a, had a plan for the Gentiles. And those guys. But the 12 apostles, their mission was to the Israelites. And he was sending them to the Israelites. And the Israelites were their brethren. That is the key thing here. It is their brethren that they are going to to spread the gospel message. And he gave them the mission. He did not hide anything from them. He told them up front the perils of their mission. And one of the perils was that they were going to be persecuted mm -hmm. from town to town. And so he gave them instructions how to deal with those that persecuted them. He said, dust off your feet, don't even bring one out of the dust. Don't let the noise leave them. Those that bless you, bless them back. But you're going to be persecuted. And then he points out, your brother and sister can hate you. And they're going among their own. And they're being told up front, your own will reject you. Now Jesus knew what that he was talking about because down the road in chapter 13, when they spoke and they found it, I want to get point out something that Kaji have said before. Very few miracles was done in Nazareth. Where he came from. Because his own rejected him because all they could see was Joseph's son and all and use a carpenter's son so who is you to come water pray talking but what the spirit of the Lord is upon me you the carpenter's son you can't do nothing so a few miracles was done there so Jesus knew what it was to be rejected by his own so when he is sending them out he is giving them fear for the fact that they will reject them in Bible study few months ago, we were looking at, at, at this in Jeremiah. Jeremiah ran to God because God has given him a mission. And his own clan's men have rejected him. And his land where he come from. And he runs to God and he starts to crow. And God said, but sure, well, if you can't run with the footmen. But who are you going to run with the horse men? You complain about your country, man, but my man, you own family who are looking to kill you, you know. When you get home, you're going to find out that you own brothers and sisters have plotted how to kill you. So you're getting frightened for you whole class, man. What's going to happen when you own brother and sister set up to kill you? So Jesus in this passage is getting them prepared for what they were going to face. 
And he points out to them, don't be afraid of them. Because you see, Jesus being a sensitive man and he cares about our infirmities. He understands that in persecution we can get frightened. We can get fearful. And some might want to turn back and say, boy, this went a little too rough. But it also was making them aware of the gravity of their mission. Their mission was bigger than them. This was a battle for the souls of men. And therefore, I have no time to pander to your fear. So he says to them, listen, decide now who you're going to be afraid of. Your brothers and sisters of me. He says, the brothers and sisters, they can kill body. What did I say? Now you may say, sure, well, I like my body. I really can't afford nobody to kill that. But then he made them understand how cruel it is. He said, but fear him who can destroy soul and body. You see, the man can destroy body. But that is it. And you should be afraid of him if, all, if you were only body. The problem is you're also a soul. The body is the house. The soul is you. And the body that will destroy that is God. Man can destroy that. Man can destroy the house. But, can destroy you. but God can destroy the house and you. So he said, the body that you really should be afraid of is God. So in light of that, go and carry out your mission. And once you determine that you are going to be afraid only of God, he says to them, this sparrow only cost a few pennies, but you know what? The sparrow don't gotta worry we get eaten or nothing. The sparrow cheap. You can buy a sparrow, any poor man can buy a sparrow. And yet I take care of the sparrow. So what do you think I can do with you? But he was making them aware that their mission was a serious mission and it is going to put them at loggerheads with even doors within their Household. And then he got to 34. And there's a passage, as I said, I remember I, I taught this at a Bible study at Beckles Road, and people look at me strange. Because we don't read this. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon a little child. And we got the nurse, he runs and things don't pack. And the celebrities that about their sin and saying but what did Jesus do and Jesus was love and you know Jesus was all of this you know he, he loves everybody and down the road they go and they know Jesus better than you that go church I think they don't read these passages I don't even think they ever read the Bible but they make up a Jesus so he's calling him Jesus so they come up with Jesus, not Jesus. Verse 34. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have come, I have not come to bring peace. But a sword. It's Jesus talking. This ain't Sean, this ain't Peter. That took a sword and cut off my ear and thing, you know. This is gentle Jesus, meek and mild. This is Jesus, the loving God, you know, that touch everybody upon the head and thing and give them a hug. This is that same Jesus they say, don't think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I ain't come to bring the peace. I come to bring a sword. That's only Jesus you ever hear about, right? You see, Jesus now was going on to proclaim a truth. There's a war going on. This war started from in the heavenlies. From the time Satan rebelled and was cast down, a war has been waging for the souls of men and who should be God. 
God that is God know who he is. He's God. Satan that is a created being feel that he should be God. And he hate men who God created who I believe in his mind usurp his position as the apple of God's eye so he don't like none of us. Those are in, within the church and those outside. So a war has been going on ever since for the souls of men. Now the thing about this war, it only got two sides. So if you reject Christ, you're automatically on the side of Satan. Whether you think so or not. And once you accept Christ, you're automatically on the side of Christ, which means you're an enemy of Satan. Amen. Now the sin about this war, then the vacancy is open for spectators. Nor referees. Somehow this game end up that they don't need those. So you're either fighting for Satan or you're fighting for God. No in-betweens. So that's a problem. Because once you pick one, you're automatically the enemy of the other. So when Jesus said, I ain't come to bring peace but a sword, Jesus is saying, as long as you choose me, peace going through the window, there's going to be conflict in your very own household. You're looking for trouble. So therefore, when you choose or decide to, ch you, to come on my side, to accept me as Lord and Savior, know that a sword is going to come and divide down your very own household. You know that sounds like a lot. Because some might be thinking about when I signed up for that, signed up, I didn't sign up for the war. I didn't sign up for the big fight. I'm a peaceful person. I don't like fighting. Well, guess what? You're in it. He said, for I have come to set a man against his father. And a daughter against her mother. And a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Who's going to be your enemy? Those that live in a house with you. Why? As I said, there's a war. The mindset of the child of God is at variance with those that are not. As long as you are following the word of God, rest assured, as peaceful as you try to live, you are going to be in conflict with the unsafe. I ain't hiding it. I don't care how peaceful you try to live. As long as you are following the word of God, at some point, you are going to be in conflict with the unsafe. They can just decide they don't like you. You haven't said anything. But your spirit, God flows out of you. The spirit of God flows out of you. And the unsafe man decides, I just don't like you. And you're saying, yeah, but I haven't done anything. You don't have to. The devil picks up that you are one of God's children and automatically get his children to decide that he don't like you. You haven't done anything. So you can imagine when you start to spout the word of God, good Lord, trouble. So your view on marriage your view on abortion. A woman get up in church and talk about abortion and rape and all kinds of things. And this was a thing a church said and somehow it got out. And before you know, the former head of uh, the family planning lab basing the woman all about the place when they call it programs and the papers and all kinds of things. Because she dared to speak. According to her convictions from the word of God. Put in the cross here. Of those that want nothing to do with God. And don't tell me that they go to church. God, guess what? Some of your biggest enemies going to be those that are sitting down beside you. 
they have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof. You call them brother, you call them sister, them is certain that they're calling you so do. So don't tell me they go to church. You want to find out, know, start a hold to the word of God and say, Thus saith the Lord, and you'll start to find out know, how much is your brother and how much is your sister. Well, I don't feel that the Bible they mean so. That ain't plain as day, you know. But I don't. Cheryl blames me for a friend of hers not speaking to her no more. She was looking to get involved with a guy. And she called me to ask my view. The boy don't go nowhere near church. And I love it bad and thing. And all I say, but the word of God says, do not be unequally yoked. But the word of God says, do not be unequally yoked. Soon after, she really didn't speak to us no more. And the wife blamed me. I know I had nothing to do with that. All I did was what they say was what the word of God said. But that is the kind of thing, if you are holding to the word of God, you are going to be in conflict. And as we get closer to the end, that conflict is going to increase. You only have to look and see what is going on in Barbados. And as I said, if you follow the calling programs at all, you will recognize increasingly there's a hostility to the church. If you're going to come from the church, but you're going to sound like the world, they love you. You're the greatest thing ever. You're going to be their buddy. You're going to be their pal. Boy, they're going to embrace you. But you see, for the time you come up and actually start to talk Bible, you can get cursed by every calling program around. They can hate you. So there's a hatred increasingly for the church of God because the enemy who controls those that do not know Christ got a real problem with the church. So when you signed up to follow God, Know that you were in the cross here's of the enemy. So when Jesus said, I have come to bring a sword. Amen. He knew what he was talking about. He, at one point he pointed out the world hit you because why they hit me first. Yes. They hit me first. So when I hear this love fest coming from the, the actors and the actresses and things that doing all kinds of things and everybody talk about God. And, and, and some walk out talk with Jesus. I know there is a mock Jesus that they have constructed in their minds. And not the one in the Bible. Because the one in the Bible. Because you like to quote the woman called in adultery. You love to quote that. They don't ever read the end part. So I love to quote up to the point where he say who without sin cast the first stone. And they don't read the rest when he tell the woman go and sing no more. So they all quote that part. But they love to quote that. So they're Jesus. They have constructed a Jesus that says you can do whatever you feel like. I am the God of love. It's the same Jesus that after the coming of the Holy Spirit cause an nurse and Sapphira to fall down one after the next. Uh-huh. Same Jesus. There's the same Jesus that yet a vest out of a tree that was not a fruit. Curse the tree and it withered up. You imagine man yet a vest out of a tree. That wasn't producing the way it should. And he cursed it. This is the same Jesus that plucked some wits together and gets a violent beat some men and run them out the church. Because they were violating the church. You see Jesus, you know. Amen. If we follow this Jesus, trust me, we can got conflict. We can got trouble. 
That is what you have signed up for when you said, I am a child of God. So when you sing the songs that we sing, I have surrendered all to you. I hope you know what you're saying. I hope you understand what you are saying because it ain't going like, to it be too nice. Your work colleague could decide they don't like you. You still want to surrender all? We're falling nothing. That could cause you not to get promoted. You sure you still want to surrender all? That could cause you to lose your job. Hmm? That could cause you to lose some of your good, good friends. You sure you want to fool nothing? You best keep that little piece for yourself if you're certain. Because it's the truth. Every year we have the common reunion and I went one single year. And I got there about after seven. And by ten o'clock I didn't ready to come home. That's the time things now dead in the full swing, you know. And I stayed on for another hour. Because it would look bad. But guess what I found? After the meet and greet, I'm seeing people that you had not seen since school. There was nothing left to discuss. There was nothing left to talk about. So much so, a girl started to discuss with me some issue we were talking. And without thinking about it, Pastor, I think I went into preacher mode. And Bible study mode. And I started to talk about God and this and that and it down the road. And and when I catch myself, I said, oh, shoot, Sean, you in the church. And I said, oh, sorry, I forgot where it was. And it's when I realized that the problem now was not them. It was me. I had changed. And so the conversation now that used to stimulate me for hours, no longer was. So in two twos, I was bored. I wanted to go home. So my soy was standing up looking lost and a partner of mine said, you want to go home, right? I said, how you know? He said, no, you for not fear, you know. I can deal with it. And it wasn't that they had changed. It was that I had. That is what giving your life to Christ can cause to happen. You drop off friend, people that you held dear for a long time, and not because they have done anything, you have. You switch sides. So your whole thought pattern has changed. The way how you see things have changed. What stimulates, what excites you have changed. That's what he talked about, they come to bring a sword. So associations that you once had, you find that they start to drop off. You no longer have the interest. And you start to realize how foolish this is. And how pointless this is. And it wasn't pointless last week. But this week it is. We came here two or three Sundays ago. We rally. We saw a slight. And we heard a testimony of what's going on in Grenada. And here's a man making his livelihood from selling alcohol. That is what he knew. But having given his life and having the Holy Spirit start to work on his life, the man takes the rum shot and says, Listen, this is not a church. That is what happens when you give your life to Christ. It causes things to shift. It causes things to change. And it means that you're going to lose some people. So you can rest assured, oh, he ram shot, clan's gone. Some probably tell you he's foolish. Then people got to be rich. He get he chop and get a bunch of people from Barbados and Guyana. You even know them, he's a foolish man. 
more than likely. Don't want to tell you that everybody cheer when he gave his shot into a church. We are here, we cheer because we understand that God has changed and transformed a life. And we have recognized that God is using it now to transform a community. But don't think everybody that in that community in Grenada saying glory be to God. So I'm cussing him. I'm telling him how foolish he is. And he know has to deal with that. That is a reality. He has to deal with that. And there's going to probably be moments when don't come in and the enemy say, boy, you're a foolish man, boy. You're going to keep your ram shot. And he has to fight against that. And glory be to God, the Holy Spirit will be with him and help him to fight against it. Because those are the things that happen when we give our life to Christ. It is not an easy road. But the problem is we don't like to be honest. So everybody is going to pretend that we say, just say kumbaya. But once we give our life to Christ, it is conflict. It is conflict in your own body. Paul spoke about it. He said, the things that I want to do, I don't do any things that I don't want to do or find myself doing. He asked, who can, who can, um, what is it, redeem me? Can, I don't think it's the right word. Who can rescue me from this body of death? He calls himself a wretched man. Because it puts you in conflict. Because before, see a woman look good, I just run up to her. Ain't got to worry. This is the way I always move. <laughs> now you give life to Christ and all of a sudden, your body saying, boy, that woman look good, what can happen? And a voice saying, boy, you can't do that no more. No, you got conflict. You didn't have conflict before. You just follow what the flesh want to do. Now all of a sudden you hear a voice saying, well, you can't do that. Now a war start within you. There ain't nobody outside. Within you now there's a war. Shoot what you can do now. Before you hold criteria for picking a mate was how they look. She shaped good, she looked good, that is all. Pretty face, that is all. Now all of a sudden you got these different criteria coming in. Spirit telling you, yeah, she has to be filled with the Holy Spirit. She must be a child of God. And all kinds of variables now that you never considered before. Now make it hard now to find a mate. Before she only had to be breathing. Now you got a whole set of variables that come into play because now you're operating by different rules. Different regulations. I dare say you have been called a higher standard. But that is when you give your life to Christ. When you choose to follow God, there is conflict. Within yourself, Within your community, Amen. within your house, whole. Brothers and sisters, say close. There's a serious walk, you know. Amen. Giving your life to Christ and singing two songs. The great song that we sing, it is well with my soul. It came out of serious conflict. He could have raged and ran at God and decided he done with it. How a God that is so great could let this kind of thing happen to me. He could have let loose from God and decided to turn him back. You know what? He made a decision. I have decided to follow Christ and therefore it is well with my soul. He the giant of a man. A giant of a man. Many of us would crumble face with that situation. But he knew what he had signed up for when he gave his life to Christ. And he was not turning back. It is what our Christian walk is like. 
have come to pray a sword. Husband can decide I hate wife. Wife will decide that she hates husband. Brother will hate sister. Mother will hate son. And down the line it will go. We ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till the real end times come. When your own brother can report you to the authorities and get you drag off. If you're harming any Christians in your house, let me know if you want to live. Or you want to live. So, Sister Dorothy, you're gone. I report here tomorrow. Or even, boy, callous want to live. So, you tell you, you're in trouble, you're gone. That is the kind of thing that it will happen. The man that you think you he tight. When fierce a persecution, he can sell you out. That is a Christian walk. It is not all saying. That is good. And thank God we have those moments. But it is time of conflict. And as long as we decide we are going to walk this road, there will be conflict. But glory be to God. The verse 38 and 39. Whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake. See, if you want to hold on to the comforts of this life so much that you reject God, God said you're going to lose it. As a matter of fact, he said, I can, I can, he said, man, are you are as though you didn't know me, I can ask as though you didn't know you when you get to my father. You may ask, what about Peter? He's talking about two different things. Peter was a fleeting moment of desperation. But when you see the Bible make the definitive statements, he is not, it's not generally speaking of fleeting moments that all of us are prone to. It is talking about a permanency in your mind where you have fully walked away. Where you have fully decided, I am choosing the world over Christ. So it's different than Peter. From the time he caught crow to Peter realized, so show I do foolishness. And run back. The one that the Bible, the Bible speaks of losing your life, the cock could crow till 12 o'clock. He ain't coming back. So he says, Those that want to hold on to the world and deny me before the world, guess what? When I get to the Father, I am going to deny them too. As a matter of fact, they already made it the bed in hell. But those that are prepared to lose their life for me, they will find it. Amen. They will have everlasting life. Amen. In other words, they're saying, what I have in store for you is worth the handsome grunts of this walk. It is worth the struggles of this walk. It is worth the heartache at times of this walk. What I have in store or no eye can see, no ear can hear, the mind cannot imagine what it is I have in store for you. But rest assured, it is worth the struggle of this present age. So hold on to Christ. Be sober. Be vigilant. Know the kind of life you have been called to and make the decision what Ever comes my way, I will stand with God. I will say it is well with my soul. Amen. If there's anyone that do not know Christ, you have never made a decision for Christ. Or so you thought you did it. 
you're on the wrong side of the conflict. Because staying with the world means ultimately you will lose. Because Christ has already won. Even though it may not seem so, he has already won. So if you're not on the side of Christ, you're on the losing side. It is time to come across the winning side. You're so political here. That's how you lose already. That's how you can win. Come cross to the winning side. Jesus Christ. So if you have been walking with the enemy and been walking with the world, I'm telling you this morning, I'm giving you the opportunity to join a true, true winning side. To join a side that going places. A side that is victorious. Something political. That is a side to join. Come out of the doldrums. Come in to victory. There's a passage passed in Colossians where, and I like how the English Standard Version puts it. It comes over like for those that know football and stuff, where you talk about a football transfer, you buy a man. It comes over as such. He says, You have been delivered from the domain of darkness. And transferred into the kingdom of the sun. So you were once in darkness. And the father came and paid the ransom. And said, well, I'm bike enough. I want him on my team. And the devil said, but he is mine. You can't have him. Father say, how much you, can, you want me to pay for him? Well, you can go to break the transfer record if you want him. And Father say, no problem. My blood would work. Devil say, your blood? You can give up your blood for him. We're here to use. If you tell your football team, he can't play the football. We hear that good. He ain't worth that. The father said, no problem. Yes, I prepared a pair of blood. Amen. That was a boy alone. The father says, I got my son here. He can go to the cross. And he paid with blood. And Kenneth get transferred from darkness. I brought into the team of the son. Into his marvelous light. Now we upon a winning team in the game. Beat all the time you didn't know. Now we upon a winning team this morning. If you want to join that winning team. Kenneth can testify. It's a good team to be on. Marcy can testify. It's a good team to be on. Thank God they were transferred. I will testify. It's a good team to be on. If you have not been transferred. And you want to be. Just raise your hand. And we can pray with you. You want to be transferred this morning? Just raise your hand. We will pray with you. Want me share? And if we all on the winning team, don't let the enemy entice us to come back over. There are gonna be times when it look, boy, things look rough on this side. And the enemy can come and whisper, boy, you're going to stop with me. Know that he's a liar. You're the better out there. You know the children of Israel, they're crying out to God, Oh Lord, they are fearing me in Egypt. God, they have us making break without straw. God, we dying in Egypt. Lord, help us. 400 years, crying. God rescued them and get them water, get a fool from the heavens, and then they see an Israelite. Oh Lord, we didn't eat any good in Egypt. Lord, taste it so good in Egypt. You bring me out here to starve me out. Seeing people, you know, it's what the enemy tells us when we have come over to God's side. Man, you did better cross by me. 
that is the time to say no. What ear be times I am staying with Christ. Glory be to God. Be not dismayed, whatever you take. God will take care of you. Could we stand and just sing that part of that song, please? This is my desire.
in our lives. You may have your seats for a couple minutes while we do our clothing, closing. Announcements, but our closing part of the ceremony service here that includes uh, announcements. Uh, first of all, we want to thank those who attended the walk yesterday. Um, we left here early in the morning and walked to Oystins. You know, when the pastor said that uh, before the service, he told me, I want to speak first. I thought he was going to make an announcement that we had to go and look for John at the hospital this evening. <laughs> but as I came in and I saw him, you know, I said, well, it was him. And then I said, was it Trevor? And then I saw Trevor. You know, they were laughing at me yesterday after we got down there, went into the sea, so obviously I had to pull off my shirt, you know, and people want to know if I'm an orphan. I said, no, I'm not an orphan. Why you say that? I said, you ain't got nobody. <laughs> so I had to explain to them, you know, it's just I came along and forgot my muscles at home. <laughs> Trevor said, well, anybody could forget anything. So, Trevor, I thank you for encouragement in that area. The announcements for the week are as follows. Of course, we have um, our regular Bible study on Tuesday. Both uh, Bible studies, the one that starts at 5.30, 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and then the second one that starts at 7.30. And we invite you to make plans to be in one of these one of these sessions we have um police band concert here at the church next sunday evening you might remember that they played for us last year and we are going to have the band play for us again next sunday we invite you to come out of course invite someone to to come along and let us have a good time in the lord We've also been asked to announce another event taking place at another church and uh, next Sunday as well, and we are going to keep that commitment to do so. But the Seven Day Advent, not Seven Day, Salvation, the Salvation Army Corps at Long Bay, St. Philip, many of you know where that is. As you get up the Long Bay, you make the right turn, it is about halfway between that road and the other side of um, Sam Lawrence Castle site. Uh, that Army Corps is having their harvest service next Sunday evening, next Sunday evening as well. Back to Ruby and the Women's Fellowship. We'll meet uh, next, this Saturday, November 4th at 5.30 p.m. And as usual for the month of November, they're telling you they celebrate the Bajan Way with lots of food and fun, all Bajan. Come out and text your test your knowledge of Barbados. Eat, drink, and have a good time as we fellowship with each other. And then it says, all ladies who have not received your slits for the mystery basket, Sister Marlene will be handing them out after the service. So look out for her. See you on Saturday and see you real soon. Sister Marlene, let everybody know who Sister Marlene is so that the ladies know who to look out for. All right. Here she, pardon? The time of the police band concert. Six o'clock. Six o'clock next Sunday evening is the time for the police band concert. But Women's Fellowship, uh, please reach out to Sister Marlene or you can let Sister Angela direct you and uh, to her and you have your activity next month for, for independence. Um, as I look down my list here, I think that that is all of the announcements that we have for this week. And we pray that you will take them to heart, note them, and, and participate. We're drawing yet closer to the close. Are there any ones who are traveling or, you know, having a birthday this week or recently? If so, we invite you to come to the front. I 
I see the Howards are coming. I don't think this is birthday. This is traveling, right? All right. Uh -huh. Before we celebrate with those who are here, um, I think it's necessary for me to, to say this to you, that there are some things that Philip may not have been privy to yesterday while you were walking. Um, where we were walking, Brother Trevor Franklin and I set a pretty hot pace. We took, the, we took the lead from here right down to St. Patrick's. Let me see how well you know the, the people at this church. There were two persons who were behind us talking. And they said to Trevor Trev, those two persons are going to attempt to pass us. So I just got from the side of my eye and I saw them coming. We were walking, but they glanced again, and they were running. So they ran past. So I said to Brother Trev, Trev, let them go on. They will burn out. So I said to him, our strategy is we're going to let them go as far as the industry is going down um, Newton. Then we go after them again. So they continued to talk. They were talking. So Brother Trev and myself, we crept upon them. One of the persons looked back and said, they come in. So they started to run. <laughs> so as we got close to them, one of them looked back and said, me, Pastor, it ain't me here. Are you only following this person? <laughs> it ain't me. I ain't it, I ain't it. But that person was running too, both of them. So then, because I, I would not have been ready for a while, my legs started to hurt. We said, Trev, go, go after them, go after them, go after them. But the Trev told me, the closer he got this person, the more they ran. Because they intended they must get him first. Who are those persons? We will leave that as a mystery, sir, Pastor. Who are those persons? It reminds me of a few fellas who are in the court. Stand up before the judge. And the judge says, you. What is your name? He gave his name. He said, and what is your address? He said, sir, um, no place of abode. He went to the next guy. He said, you, what is your name? And the fellow gave his name. He said, what is your address? He said, sir, and your honor, I am his neighbor. <laughs> <coughs> Let us, um, you know, <laughs> pray for those. Birthday for you, my sis. All right, so we have a birthday, and we have travel. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray for the travelers, the Howards, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Howard, and then we have the birthday celebration. Let's stand as we lift our brethren before God in prayer. Almighty God, Holy Father, we just thank you for every blessing that you have afforded us this morning. Lord, through our worship in song, our worship in giving, and through the powerful word that you gave us this morning, Lord, you have blessed us, you have strengthened us, you have encouraged us, you have taught us, and indeed you have shown us your way once again. We want to thank you for this opportunity. We pray that every heart here this morning was ignited and revived to go along the Christian path. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that during the week, Lord, that these words would stick with us, that we will be strengthened as we go about to our various activities, whether it is in the office, at school, and wherever we go, that your word would remain with us and that we will become lights in the areas in which we go. And even if we encounter and when we encounter difficulties because of stances that we may take, Lord, we ask for your strength, and we even pray for those who would persecute us. We thank you for every blessing, Lord God, and particularly the blessing of the ability to travel. And this morning, we bring brother and sister Howard before you, Lord. You know them by name and nature. You love them. You know every hair on their head, Lord God, and you want to take care of them. And we are just reaffirming what you want to do, Lord. So we're asking you, Lord, to take them 
Lord, to whatever destination they're going and by whatever means they're going to be doing so. Take them into your care, Lord, and bring them, give them a good time, a successful time, and bring them back to us in peace and in safety. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of his blessed Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord, everyone. Let's sing happy birthday to our special sister. Yeah.